Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV. We have with us a special guest today, two-time K1 World Max champ, four-time shoot boxing champion, fight team owner, proud father and family man. And one other thing is you have too many accolades for me to list them all in the kickboxing world. So that's when you know you've made it, when people can't even list. You've got like 20 titles or something. Like So I can't list them all. Mr. Andy Sauer, uh, welcome and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you too, guys. Uh, thanks for having me in your, uh, in your show. And uh, yeah, let's have a good conversation. Um, let's let's kick off at the beginning. So how old were you when you started training martial arts and how and why? Uh, I started kickboxing when I was seven. Um, uh, I started uh, playing football when I was five. And I was three when I started swimming. Uh uh, the sports uh, came into my life because of uh, yeah, a, doc a doctor's advice of uh, being an asthmatic uh, boy, a little boy who had some problems with breathing. Uh, it was in the family. Uh, my father's side of the family, there were a few people who had asthma. And uh, yeah, so I did I. And the doctor gave my parents the advice to start uh, sports. Uh, as soon as possible and uh, so that's why I, I started uh, swimming at uh, the age of three yeah five uh, when I started playing football and seven kickboxing so uh, kickboxing was not a particularly sport to to choose from especially for my mother because you know it's martial arts yeah. it's, uh, and there are yeah, many mother's opinions it's a violence thing and uh, you know but I was I wouldn't say that I, I, I had a lot of friends, but let's say I was the weakest. I was the, um, the shy guy, the shy boy, the cute boy. And uh, so that's why my father said, you know why? You know what? Let's start doing a march lot. And uh, a friend of, friend of us, of my parents, their kids were already doing kickboxing. And uh, yeah, so it became, became reality to... Yeah, to to make the first steps into the gym in the dojo, in the time. What what was it in Holland that you started? Uh, was it in the Netherlands that you started kickboxing, or did you start somewhere else? Oh yeah, I started in, in Holland. I've been I'm born in Holland in the, in the place of Den Bosch. Uh, it's more the south. It's the, the capital of the pro of our province, North Brabant. And uh, yeah, I've been born there, and still I'm living over here. So. Uh, yeah, it was a Dutch. Uh, and to be honest, in that day, there were just two gyms in the, the whole city. And now it's uh, 40 plus. When, when uh, did that explosion happen in, in Holland with uh, kickboxing? I think it was just because it's it's uh, how it goes, you know. When there is a new brand in the in the in the world in the game, then 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 everybody wants to be that brand or just want to step on that boat, you know. And I think uh, when we did pretty well in the martial arts, especially in kickboxing, in and yeah, the two thousands, you know, when we start. Any with the heavyweights, even though we there was no television yet uh, or broadcasted, the K1 didn't broadcast it in Holland, but the, the news came over. And then halfway, the first start of the century, the new century, yeah, the K1 Max uh, came, came in, uh, in the world and the internet was there. Uh, television also in Holland, even though the martial arts and especially kickboxing, um, it was not that fancy to be a kickboxer because a lot of people thought, yeah, you, of, or you should be a criminal or you have to be a little bit crazy to start kickboxing. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that accepted. And then we, we, uh, became reality to be on television. And from there on, yeah, and, uh, yeah, people start doing kickboxing. And when people start doing kickboxing, uh, people, business people also see their, their, uh, business in, you know, so they started, uh, to organize some, uh, some gyms and 
you know, nowadays it's, uh, for, for example, in, in my own small city, even though we are the capital, um, and we have around 180, 180,000 people in our, uh, in our city, there are 40 plus gyms. So yeah, in two decades, not in less than two de- decades, we have 40 plus gyms. So it grows, you know, if, uh, people started kickboxing, not only to be a fight, but also as to do a work, uh, workout for mothers, for women, for self-defense, for, uh, to be an athlete. Uh, and it, it just became fancy, of course. What was it about, so say swimming and football, did you pursue those sports as well? Or was it, you just stayed with kickboxing? Well, in Holland, you know, I think mainly in in, in, in Europe, uh, when you're a small kid, and especially in Holland, uh, everybody goes to swimming classes, you know, because it's important to swim when you go on holiday, you know, we are Western, we're Dutch, we have uh, enough money to spend. Uh, so people go at least one, the most of the people, by the way, uh, at least they go one time a year, they go on holiday. So they need to swim the kids. So, uh, that's a regular thing. So, uh, swimming was just a, a thing to do as a kid. There's canals as, as well in Holland, eh? There's a lot of canals. Uh, rivers, canals, uh, especially in Amsterdam. Yeah. And Utrecht. Uh, even though my city has some canals, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, beautiful. Uh, the the Benedizen, they call it. Benedizen. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's why. And, and football is number one sport, judo, hockey, uh, ice skating. That's more in the north of the Holland, you know, more the, the ice sports, but especially football. So that's why I started football on the, when I was five. And uh, I needed to make a choice when I was 18 uh, because I got, oh, sorry, six, uh, 16 or 18. No, 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 I'm lying. I'm lying. 18. Uh, because I got injured by football and, uh, I need to cancel three fights. I became a professional when I was 16. So my father said, now, now you have to make a choice. You know, it's or football or kickboxing. But in that time, I was already earning some money with kickboxing. So uh, it was a pretty easy choice for my father and not for me because I, I preferred to be a football player. Oh, but really? What level, was, what uh, level football did you play? What level? amateur and uh, when I was young I did some stages for, with uh, professional clubs but you know I wasn't that good enough you spoke honest, you you sp- and no no go please go on. no 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 you, you'd say you say the world of, of football players were way bigger in the time than kickboxers and it's still you know it's still there are less kickboxers than football players so to realize an, 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 a career in, in, in football uh, was way difficult than, than to be a uh, martial artist. You've so mentioned, yeah, I was about to say, you've mentioned your dad a, a bunch of times. How close yeah. is he with you and how close is he with your career? Uh, to be honest, uh, when, I, when I became 18, he got his first stroke. In the years before, he had some little strokes, uh, some tias. And uh, in the time we didn't know what happened, we went to the doctors or he went to the doctors and uh, they couldn't tell him what it was exactly. He was a house painter, you know? So, uh, when he was young, he painted with chemicals in the, in the, in the painting, you know? So they sus- uh, suspected that it was just because of the chemicals and that he got a little brain damage of it. And, uh, so that's why they told him because he had a, uh, his mouth was hanging sometimes, you know, and uh, then he, then the big stroke came and then they kind of came to realize. And then in that time, they just made some pictures, some uh, a scan, a brain scan. And then they had a conclusion that he had many little strokes, the TIAs. And uh, so the first stroke came and in uh, less than one and a half year, he, began, he got two more extra. And the last one was so heavy that he got stuck in his own body, he couldn't talk anymore, and it didn't became better. He became um, he became really uh, 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 handicapped. Yeah, it was really handicapped. So then he f- it fell it fell apart. You know, the, my father who chose my path and who steer mine, he, he made some choices for me. And then he fell away. So I was on my own. 
you know, and uh, my mother was busy with my father because uh, he became sick. So it was a, bit of a, a, a rough time and an un, uh, uncertain time, you know, because, yeah, I went to school. I, I, uh, I became already professional when I was 16, even though I still get, uh, went to school. Uh, so the expectations were pretty harsh, you know, and I, I footballed, uh, I played football, uh, with, uh, in an amateur club, but on the highest level, you know, in the first, first team of the adults. So there was always pressure, you know, and it was good in some way, but also it was not that nice always, but, um, so then I chose for kickboxing, so I became a professional, a real 100% professional, even though I still went to school. And uh, from then it went so fast, it went so fast. I, um, I arrived in Japan when I was 19. Uh, I won a tournament, shoot boxing tournament. And yeah, from there on, it, it went so fast. You know, it, 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 every year, uh, minimum, uh, minimum fights, five fights, six fights. Uh, sometimes I fought two tournaments a year and in between I just had fights. So it went so fast. It went unbelievable fast. And I'm 37. I'm still fine. You had just kickboxing like 180 fights. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, what? I beg your pardon. What, what? So number two, you know, when I was, uh, when I was a small kid, I'm going to stand. Okay. The, Do whatever you like, man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you like. Yeah. Um, um, in the youth, I fought a lot of youth fights, and even though it's uh, because the world, the kickbox world in Europe, especially in Holland, was so small, I fought many opponents double times or triple times. You know, sometimes I fought my opponents uh, like three or four times. I was going to ask you, um, what's that like? What because you fought, you had some wars where you you lost. Yeah. Like uh, with Kraus, you lost against him, and then you won, and then, but the stakes were so high because you you won the like it was on the way to winning the K one Max, but you'd lost by knockout as well, yeah. like and uh, Bokau as well. You had Masato. Can you speak on some of those? Yeah, you, you know, uh, to be honest, um, a lot of people are trying to let people understand what happens in 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 the human body or in in a particular person in in his mind what happens and it's almost the same and i can tell you a lot a lot about it but for me it was just more instinct you understand um it it became a way of life it became uh, a certain goal in your life and it, it was the only thing i could think about you know it was only fighting uh people were talking hey any what you need to do after your career start a gym or um, put your money away for the, for for the future and that's what i i didn't want to do i just wanted to fight i did want to but it was the expectation from a lot of other people that i have to perform that i have to be successful that i needed to win so i was constantly i was under pressure under pressure under pressure and um i still feel that pressure nowadays or we, i became an adult and I became smarter and i realized what happens and uh, so i decided now to to end up my career as good as uh, as it can so when you say you realize what happens can you explain what that means like ha like how do you deal with pressure because people feel pressure all the time, you know, like you can feel pressure just as a parent, but how, what is it that you, when you say, I realize what happens, can you, what, what is it that happens? Yeah, in, in some way, uh, some sort of points, I came to realize that the expectations from other people were important for me. And uh, I don't have an own opinion. I didn't, uh, didn't dare to choose for, for myself or by myself, for the people I love. Um, so I did a lot of things for other people. And now for the first time in my career, I end up my career, uh, in one championship, uh, and I'm, I'm going to end it up by my own choice. You know, this is going to be the last dance for me. And then, you know, it feels good 
to stand behind it for 100% because of me, because I choose it, you know, and not because the expectation from other people or from people close by or from uh, friends, family, managers. They were in the time, in, in, in the, all these decades, I, uh, I, I'm fighting, you know, my career is always dependent on others' opinion, you know? And even though it was their, not their fault, for example, for my family, you know, it was for me the thing to do. And uh, some people are talking about passion, you know, and I, I never felt that passion, you know, even because it's like war, you know, you go to war every time. Each each training is it could be a war. There is some pressure, even though you're not sparring. In your mind, is a kind of war to uh, to perform, to real, to to stand ready for to be fit for the next fight, next fight. So, if I can make a, a little conclusion, you know, you, you have this Japanese samurai. You know, they were always standing um, in front of the li line. You know, they were always capable. They were. They were always ready to make the war for their uh, emperor, you know. And that's how I felt. That's how I feel, you know. I'm I I cannot choose. I've been trained like a machine, and a machine has to do his work, go to his work, and do his things. And even though I didn't win all my fights, I was I'm always standing. I never choose an opponent. I never if they ask ask me, hey Andy. Do you want to find this this opponent? I always think, God damn, this one is good. From when I was a kid, when I was small, when I was 16, when I was a professional, I needed to fight adults, even though I was 14. I fought in England, and they told that I was 16, and I fought an adult guy from 20-plus guy, you know, and I fought, you know? And uh, I always felt that felt that uh, connection with to be just an insti instinctive guy. But to be honest, in this modern world and reality, it it brought me some bad things too, you know. And it's uh, to not handle the pressure, of couldn't handle the pressure constantly a year, you make some mistakes. So in life, it was pretty harsh sometimes. Was it was it a hard thing for you then? H how did you handle that day? How did you reconcile that with your day to day life? Like because that was tough. I I I wonder uh, under 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 pressing the 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 pressure, uh, you know, to relax, too too much relaxing, you know. And when I was young, there was a lot of friends. You are young, and somehow you became a reality star in Holland. <laughs> Thanks, man. So it, it, it became famous. While I was just a shy boy, I was just um, I just a sam samurai, you know. People told me what to do, and I did it, you know? And then uh, when I had some break-offs, you know, with some time for myself, you know, then with young, when you are young, you, you attract a lot of people, you know? So, and then also when you're young, you want to party because you want to relieve the stress. So I, I drank a lot, I partied a lot, uh, uh, and I became really, on a young age, I became father. When I was 16, I met my wife, still my wife. Uh, so she came under pressure too. And she saw thing, that things went wrong, you know? I was constantly under pressure and she, she saw, she saw it happen, happening, you know? And, but yeah, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't handle me because when I choose the other way, I was so strong, you know? I was weak in the other, on the, on the other, uh, other side, but I was really strong against, yeah, my loved ones. So it it was sometimes hard, you know, especially for the people around me. I can imagine because you you also speaking. I think um, there's a dichotomy in in everyone, but I think for for fighters or people that are very um, that publicly are very strong, you see Andy Sauer on TV, and I just say to you from how I saw you fighting, you fight like um, no no emotion. Yes. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Honestly. and so. Like, you know, but then you don't realize, like, these people, like, now, even now when I'm talking to you, because I actually, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was talking to my wife before and I said to her, I don't know if this podcast is going to go for a long time because, like, I remember when you were fighting, you were very, like, you know, they ask you a question and you answer like a robot, you know? And I said yeah, to yeah. her, I, I don't know. I don't know how this interview is going to go. I've got a lot of things, but, 
you know, people don't see it. So there's that dichotomy and, and you're talking about how, what it was like as a human being dealing with it, not just Andy Sauer, who you see in the ring. So I don't know. Can you speak to that a little bit like that, that going backwards and forwards between bulletproof Andy and at home, not happy Andy or happy Andy at home or not, or, you know what I mean? Human being Andy. Yeah. To be honest, not, the not happy boy, you know, I, I always tell my wife and people close by who I love. I was, I just now I'm starting not living my life, but starting to adapt and to, um, I don't know the right word for it, but I just, um, Rico's not at Rico's all. I'm, I'm just improving myself right now as a human being. So for me, the time stopped when I was young, you know, I became young in my mind. I just did what the other people expected from me. And besides fighting, I was just a rough guy because the, the, the people who love me, they accepted who, who I was, just a normal guy, you know, but they wanted to choose me. And I was just infected by uh, stress, you know, infected by stress and uh, to constantly every year to perform, to be, to be the best uh, of the world, you know. And as you, as you said, the bulletproof Andy, that's how I wanted to not show my emotions, not to show who I really was, what I really was. I didn't want to fight. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to kill you. But the expectations were, yeah, you're a fight. I to kill somebody or going to war, you know, in, in that kind of zone I was. I um, behaved myself when I needed to. Um, when I needed to perform, you know, and, and, and what, what, what I could be do best was acting like I was, was tough enough, you know, but without any crazy things, I, I didn't to, to dare to speak too much or do some crazy things and just be calm, you know, relax. And when the moment is there, perform on the moment you need to perform. So, in a time before, I, it, it was not a game for me. It was just, it was just an expectation and a kind of job, just a, just a job, like, like a soldier who goes to war a couple of times a year or, or a, a day sometimes when they're in, uh, in the fields. It sounds like almost yes. like walking a, no. a, a – sorry? The bulletproof, the bulletproof Andy, it became also uh, an alter ego. You know, it was it's more the bulletproof Andy it was like calm, relaxed, after a fight, showing no emotions, not showing you are tired because that would be a weakness. You know, so I was always busy with not to be weak, acting strong. You know, and it showed off because I, it happened. Everybody sees me as you uh, saw me. So, yeah, in that case, it worked, you know, but in my mind, I didn't want to go to, uh, to perform. I didn't want to hurt somebody else. I didn't want to train hard. I didn't want to hurt my body. I didn't want to hurt my brains. I didn't want, you know, there were so no, uh, not done, you know, there were so no things, so many no things, and there was no passion. And even though now I'm still fighting, you know, so it would be a strange thing. But I know what happened, of course, in the times I learned a lot. I spoke with professionals. So it's a good thing, you know. I just came to realize in the last few years that, that it, this is what's just my, my, my thing to do in my life. So it happened like it was. So I could accept it. It sounds like walking a tightrope, you know what I mean? And I think – like uh, Sorry? What, what did you talk, uh, like a tight room? Yeah, you know, a tight rope? You know, like yeah, there's, on, uh, uh, there's yeah. like a, a string and you're walking on it, yeah. trying, to, trying to balance. Uh, yeah, it's balanced. <laughs> you know what? I, in the time, I got a lot of fights uh, over, you know, from UFC fighters to really top-level fighters, you know, and there is uh, also a guy, and this is a good one, and then you can probably understand me. Uh, that guy... 
is Corey Sandhagen. He's uh, now the number contender in UFC on the banter. No, I, I'm not sure. Bantamweight or number four. I don't know exactly. What's he's his name? Corey Sandhagen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 He just lost his first fight in UFC from uh, the Funk Master, you know? Yep, and, uh, yep, yep. Lost to Aljamain yeah, Sterling. Sterling, yes. Yeah. And he's been to Holland uh, multiple times, like two or three times. And he went over to my place. He slept in my place. And I, we trained with each other. And uh, and he's a relaxed, he's a really calm, calm guy. He's from Colorado, Denver. So they're all pretty relaxed and cool and... You know, he's a really, he's really, really uh, a relaxed guy. You know, so he's 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 down to earth. And uh, but he told me, Andy, damn man, I just came to realize you're living on the edge, bro. He said you're always living on the edge, it's like from from left to right, bounce, go back to the mid center, go back. You know, so that that was more how I was in private. You know, beside next to the sports. In sports, I was really hard. And besides the, the sports, I was always living on the edge, bro. I told him if I should ever write a book, the title would be Living on the Edge. There you go. Yeah, like 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 on a tightrope. <laughs> you're telling me the balance part, you know, on the on the on the on the on the court, you know, on the on the rope. You know, it's always constantly under pressure and to knock that pressure away, I uh, I did some crazy things. Well, you you see that with people though, like um, you know, I'm 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 a same age as you. I'm three years older, and now like as you get to this age, you, I, I see people because I've had my own like things with like any normal person with mental health. Like, but when you go to work or when you go outside, you put on a front, your face bulletproof fab exactly bulletproof fab you know and um but now as well when i look at people i know like they pretending but i know man yeah. you go home what's that yeah what, what? Or it, you also have people i just uh, talked to my yesterday i talked with my with a good friend of mine and he's a uh, uh, kind of a mental coach for me also and if that guy steps in his energy level is relaxed, funny. And he's talking, he's a dancer, by the way. He's a dancer. He's a pretty good dancer. You know, it's break dance and crazy things. And, and it was not a metaphor, but he's telling me, even though in the last few years, weeks in Holland, it was pretty, pretty hard. He said, I, I went to classes with, with, with my kids, you know, because he has also a dance school. Uh, I went to class to kiss and we went outside. It was so hot. I was sweating and I was dripping. The, the water was dripping on the ground and, and I was so tired. But when the music came, I, it's, it's freedom. And I told him, that's the difference between you and me. That's the passion. You feel the passion. You feel the love. You feel energized, even though the, 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 the things around you are hot, rough, eh? In, the, in, in, in that case, it was pretty hot, you know. It's not that really important, but he is passionate, you know. And to be honest, I, and we are, we are talking about it now. I became 38. Uh, I'm going to become 38 in November. Um, we are trying to now to look to what's, now, what, what's my passion, you know. Because now I'm 38 years old. And I still never felt the passion. You know something that I find you funny. I yeah, yeah. Because you know, you know what I find funny is because yeah. I remember. Look, sorry, what was that? You, it, it I, there are a lot of people who wear the mask. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Now I can hear you. you. Said there's a lot of people oh, that are wearing their mask. And it's difficult because in some some people get pushed in that way, you know, as some people cannot do that passion because they cannot uh, earn enough money to 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 uh, to live and 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 that's a, a pretty rough thing in this world especially in the western uh, world but on the other side you know sometimes even though it's it can be rough it also can be passionate you know 
even though you have to work hard, if it's passionate, it doesn't matter how long you need to work or have to spend energy about it, you know, because it's passion. I think what you do right now is just because, because it's your interest, you know, you're interesting in people, in fighters, you invite people to talk about, to know what happened with that kind of fight, what happens in between their ears and what happens in their brains, what happens in their life, what happens when they achieve something, because for you, probably, you saw me achieving a lot of things, you know, I earned some belts and I'm still fighting and uh, uh, I already in the, in the, in the game for 30 years. So I can imagine that you have a lot of questions for me. Well, what the hell you, you did? What the hell do you feel to hold on for two decades, you know, as a fighter? Are you crazy? No, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you. Are you I'll, still fighting? I'll tell you something that. I can imagine. You know? No, no, but I'll tell you something that I find interesting. Um, cause I've listened to your interviews. I've always been like in martial arts as well. Like I've always done, done stuff as well. Um, but one of the things I find really interesting with you, which I, I, I find great. I've always read your interviews and I ask you what's your passions, what are the things you love to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm talking about from now, maybe 20 years ago, you know, it's seen, I remember the interviews and, um, not just yours. Like I'm not a fucking stalker. I remember everyone's interviews. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, one of the things was you always say your wife and your kids, which I think is excellent. That's like same as me. That's my wife and my kids. But I never heard Andy Sauer talk about what you like to do. I've never, I, I heard you say you like to play soccer with your sons and your wife and your kids, but I've never heard you say, at, at least not until recently, I like to, paint or I like to collect stamps. I've never heard that. Yes. In, in the time for, especially when I was young, um, I could tell what I, what I love, but it was, I, in my opinion, it, it wasn't a thing to say, you know, uh, in a positive way because I wanted to be the bulletproof Andy and I, I wanted to show off that I was a good guy. I was a role model, a good guy, but hey, I love to gamble. To be honest. <laughs> oh, you're a I poker play player too. Yeah, you you're a poker player. Poker, more slots and uh, cards, playing cards. You know, so in that way, you know, I could have told me because then I was the other guy. Then I was the opposite of what I wanted to show off. Well, I thought um, I thought you played poker, so you don't play poker. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did some, but it was not that uh, passionate <laughs> to talk about passion. It was not uh, the game that I really love, but uh, I love to play cards, not poker, but it was another game. What, what uh, game? Uh, what game? Just out of curiosity. What? what? Poker. Four cards. What Just is it? To be, uh, uh, four cards, and it's, it's about uh, getting the last card, the highest card. You know, so you play and you have to admit the, the right uh, sort of card. If you cannot admit, you're going to throw your lowest card away. And on the end, you have to, uh, uh, to have a poker face if you have the highest card, yes or no. And then you're going to gamble. Then you're going to bet. Uh, I have the highest card on the end. And if you think you have the highest card, then you go with me. And if it's not, then I would win. And if you go over my, uh, highest card and even, Though you're acting, you have the highest card. You can be, ha you can have a, a low card, you know. But you, you just that's a kind of way of poker, also. Yeah. Is it Dutch? Is it a Dutch game, or is it just a game? Yeah. How yeah. how when you say you like to gamble in that? How how much are we talking about the wins and the losses? I was losing a lot because I wanted to go always, even though I won. I thought, man. Let's lose something so I can uh, keep the players on, uh, on the table. Or I thought, you know, I want more and more and more and more and more. So I have a really long breath, to be honest. You know, I can breathe really long. It's like, a you know, it's the character. I always tell if you see an athlete, especially a fighter, you can see how they behave, you know, as I could as I could uh, explain myself, you know, the first round, I'm always looking uh, how my opponent's acting, how he behaves, how he stands is, uh, just controlling uh, the fight, uh, the fight motors of my, my, my opponent. That's how I do too, you know, in playing cards, in life, you know, I just can look at doing crazy things, yes or no. 
And if I go, if I go, there is no uh, stop, you know? So that's why I always, uh, people told me, wow, man, you have, you have another, another, another extra lung or uh, an extra <laughs> gas, ca- gas, you know, you think gas, you're, 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 you have so many conditions, but I always go on, go on, go on. That's also with gambling. Even though I win enough, it is not enough. Uh, it's, it's, it isn't enough. If I drink, if I drink f- four bottles, or um, uh, 10 bottles or 50 bottles, I need to be the last one. I need to go hard, you know? So I was always in self-destructive <laughs> um, behavior. No, I, I can, I understand that. I can relate to that a lot in a lot of ways. One of the things I was going to ask you, do you think the fact that you wore a mask and you wore it so prolifically and so so often and for so long, does it help you to see other people that are wearing a mask? Like, the, can you see through people easier? No, nowadays, yes. In that time, it was just a mask uh, to uh, to reflect. No, not to reflect. It was just uh, needed to perform. And after the fight or between the fights, I was just a weak, weak boy in, in a way of uh, I, I opened the doors for a lot of people. You know, and especially with people who are, yeah, they are adm- admitting you, you know, they are admiring you. And yeah, then I thought, it's, it's a friend, you know, he loves me. He uh, gives me a lot of compliments. And the more people around me, the more people who, lo- who, who are loving me, uh, the better, you know. And I I, I, uh, I didn't have any control. So that's, that's why my wife were sometimes in between and uh, in, in that moment she was a problem you know in my opinion because I, uh, I thought you know hey this is a good guy so my wife always told me <laughs> she was that's uh, it's it's, it's it already happened this story is uh, it's a thousand it's, times yeah it's a famous story you know so and uh, so i was always thinking you know uh, sh- her name is Chantal. I said, Chantal, come on, man. This is a good guy. This is good. They, these are good people. Come on. Uh, uh, open the door for them. Yeah. And then she said, yeah, okay, okay. Because I was always a strong, to her, I was always strong enough uh, to say, no, it's my decision, decision, decision. I'm going to let them in. And, yeah, and I always got a slap <laughs> out here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she's still there, by the way. So, uh all the credits to my wife or else I c- couldn't talk to you right now because uh, then it uh, uh, should, should, should the story should be a little bit different. How um, you, you won one of your, one of your titles. Well, I can't remember if it was 2005, 2000, which one it was. Your wife had just given birth, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy feel. Uh, Can you talk about that? Which which fight, et cetera? Just because I, I say this, my wife gave birth, right? And one week later, I was still fucking not sleeping, you know? So yeah. it's – it's because it's hard for you as well. It's hard for the man as well. It's not just like – you know what I mean? You're Obviously, you're not the one giving birth, but it's a, it's a fucking big event. I'll fucking remember that. Um, can you talk about the whole thing? Be honest to uh, to go back to the story I or the the things I just told you. Um, my life just went how it went, you know. And uh, my wife, uh, she was 18 when she became pregnant from the first one, and uh, a couple of months afterwards, I became the, for the first time I went K1 uh, champion. So that was not that problem, you know. I went for training. My wife was taking care of the baby, and to really be honest, and that's the the most important thing in, uh, to to tell you that the family that I had, especially uh, my family in law, they were there for me. So my mother, my father in law, my sister in law, and the rest of the family, we are so close, unbelievable. It's, it is really close. Uh, for example, like six members of my family in law we almost see every day every day um so there there was a, a big net to
the, the difficulties in life, they could handle that for me. So I was a, a free guy in that way, you know. Andy, go training. We take care of the kids. Andy, uh, take your time to relieve of the stress. We take care. They was always behind me, you know, always supporting me, always having my back, even though I sometimes it wasn't wasn't realistic, but I still keeping my back nowadays too. So all the credits to them, or else, uh, like I told you, I couldn't. I couldn't talk to you right now or I was in jail or any crazy other things. Um, um, so, but then, then 2007 came and then just a couple of days before I left, just, I, I think two days, just two days, she gave birth to my second son, Keanu, and, um, and it went bad too, by the way. Fabrizio. It went, uh, my wife, um, I don't know how to call it in English, but, when they give birth, they have to relieve something out of out of them, out of, out of their stomach, you know, out of, out of their be belly. Yeah. They get loose, then yeah, they don't heal, you know. But if they the, uh, if it doesn't get loose, if they cannot get rid of it, then they keep on bleeding, 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 bleeding. So I don't know how to call. It. We call it murikuk. It's a kind of placenta or something. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure because that's not my uh, my knowledge, but. Um, so she went, she kept on bleeding, 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 bleeding. So then the doctors came, the ambulance came because uh, if, if you're losing more than two liters, then uh, it's going to be really nasty. It's going to be really dangerous too. So she um, she went to the hospital, but when she stepped up, she, she lost so many blood. Then she... Uh, yeah, she fell away. She, fell, she almost fell off the stair and uh, she get conscious, you know? So, so she couldn't um, get the whole story with her. So she was gone. She was laying down, went to hospital and she woke up in the, in the hospital and I was there with a the little, a little boy. And two days afterwards, I needed to perform. Now, not to be honest, two days afterwards, I left the country and a couple of days, five days after she gave birth, I needed to perform and I won. So every time I won, uh, the K1 title, there was a bird before. So, but to be, but to be honest, I wasn't conscious about it. I wasn't, uh, um, I didn't saw it like that. Just afterwards, I thought, God damn, <laughs> I got two kids before the championships. I won the championships. Should it, should it be an, huh? You understand? Yeah. Like so, your life was like in fast forward. Am I correct? Like it was just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. get to a certain age and it just goes bang and it like it, you stop, you know what I mean? And things start to. Yeah. Looking back. Looking back, oh, damn, and you did so many things wrong. But on the high stage, I performed well. So what 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 happened, I didn't have men mental coaches. So it all st stayed in my head, you know. And I feel bad about it. I feel guilty in many ways. Uh, I look back, I didn't have, I came to realize that I don't have to perform because others want it, you know. And I wanted to choose for myself. But every time... My manager of an organization called Andy, do you want to fight? I couldn't say no yet again, you know? So I performed, but I didn't perform for 100%. I couldn't uh, make myself uh, ready for 100% for each fight. Physically, it, wasn't, it, it is a problem. If you see me training, I go hard. I still go hard. I even go faster. I even go harder than younger guys from 20 years old, you know? Even though I'm the front leader in that case. But mental, it was a big problem. It became a big problem, especially just before the fight. All the guilties, all the things that happened where I should feel bad about it came just in, 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 in a short moment before the fight. And then you go in a fight, and then you're not fighting against your opponent, but you're fighting against yourself. How old were you when that started to happen? Uh, around the 30s. Yeah, you know, yeah, around you, it's something like... Because I, I deal with a lot of athletes. I like I, I coach and I do a whole bunch of stuff here in Australia with fighters, rugby players, a lot, a lot of different athletes. And the the hubris of youth, you know, the hubris of youth. Like you, you're bulletproof. 
no matter if you're an accountant, solicitor, whatever, but there comes a point, it doesn't matter what how successful you were, how much money, you get to a certain age where it changes. And people yeah, right. people told it to me, you know, and like I was like, nah, fuck off. You don't know what you're talking about. But it hits you. And and it yeah. hit you like that, Andy, just like that? Like one day it was just like so hard, but I couldn't I I, I couldn't I couldn't admit to it, you know? I just, okay, just go on, go on. Be stupid. Don't think, don't realize a few things. Uh, uh, do not handle the problems you have. Just go hard, you know. I, like I told you, I didn't dare to say no, as I also didn't dare to ask for help. And if I asked for help, for help it was to my wife, but she's not a professional. She didn't feel what I felt because I would never dare have to talk when I really felt because that should be a shame in my opinion eh, in the time eh, in the time I thought nah, if I should tell my feelings my emotions uh, I didn't want to hurt her I didn't want to blame her I didn't want to um, uh, yeah I didn't want to let her solve my problems you know I you know I, I'm the man I'm the father of her kids uh, I'm the man who's I have to make the money. So these kind of things, like telling her my emotions, telling her my problems, telling what happened in, in my inner self, that should be a shame. That should be uh, a lack of enough power. While I was, when I performed, I had a lot of power. But in my mind, in between the fights, in between the trainings, I was the opposite. I was the weakest person on the world, in my opinion, in my opinion, you know, so I could ship her, I could balance the two things, but I didn't dare to tell a lot of things, you know, and people said, yeah, if you should have done that, then you perform maybe better. Maybe it's not, maybe I couldn't uh, get out of that, out of that dark, dark era in, in, my, in my body, in my brain, you know, because from there on I could climb, you know, from there on I could climb because when I feel bad, it, uh, the only thing where I'm good at is performing, performing, training hard, winning, 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 winning. But therefore everything needed to, 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 to step away. So I wasn't a, a nice guy too in the preparations in, in, in fight camp. I, I, I wasn't that nice. And that's for a lot of fights, by the way, to be honest, because it is a nice. It is a nice to solve, uh, to be hurt, to perform, uh, to get injuries, to get tired, um, to live with the stress, to be better than your next opponent, uh, to conquer a title, to uh, prolong uh, your titles, you know? So it's... It's constantly on the pressure, on the pressure, not being a nice guy, not being yourself. And especially if it, if it isn't your passion, then it's, then it's a rough time. When you, when now looking back, you know, looking back at other fighters and everything, are there guys that now as an adult, you look back and you go, fuck that, that, he must have been going through that. Or do, do, do you see that? No, no, I don't see it anymore. I see a really, a really, a lot of people having passion. That's uh, not, 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 not in, in particularly a fighter, but because there are fighters like me, for sure, 100%. But uh, to have a good example, I see uh, two of my students, two of them, uh, they are pretty good and they have passion. One have, that does have really passionate and he cannot stop training. He cannot stop training. He wants to be in the gym uh, as many as, as he wants, as he can. You know, and the other one has the same thing, training hard, training hard, but that boy is also a little bit mentally, a little bit weaker, you know, and uh, self-esteem, you know, that was my problem too, because I was asthma. Uh, I, I was ashamed for myself when I was young because I had asthma. I was peeing in bed until I was 12. Um, uh, I, I, I thought I was ugly. Um, 
you know, there were so many problems that I had, you know, and my, my, my father put me under pressure, you know, and uh, he couldn't speak normal to me. It was always with a loud voice. I see those kids. So that little boy that I talking about, the one who has a normal life yeah. and he's passionate about it. The other one is passionate about it too, but he comes from another, another ground, you know, another base, another nest, you know, and, uh, you see him working hard just to perform hard, to be something, to be something. The other one is just passionate and just want to be successful too, but in another way, he's more free. The other one is more, ah, I need to, to be somebody, to be, to be something, you know, and it's just because out of, that's not only just, it's also because of getting out of, out of his, uh, for his self-esteem also, you know, so. Yeah, and I see the difference in between. So I don't see the people that uh, that have that many problems with, like Corey Sandhagen, for example. He's working just out of fun. When I, I I came, I went to Brazil a lot of times when I helped Jose Aldo, and I see all these guys, even though they have no money. That was the reason that I, that they want to perform and to conquer something, you know, in life, you know, to have a better life. They were always smiling. After the fight, after training, they was always sitting around with each other and talking about the sports, how they became better, having fun, smiling. There was a good environment, good mentality, good vibes, you know? Sorry, I, I want to ask you something, just because you, you touched on, on Jose Eld. Do you think that that's... Um a cultural difference because my, my family, my background is, is Latin American. So we're from Uruguay yeah. and, um, we always think of Europeans as cold, you know, like yes. we've, and, and so like when I see Fedor, Igor of Chenchen, you know, those people, they, they, you know, they could kill you and then go have a dinner. You know what I mean? And that's why, again, yeah. I reiterate the conversation. I did not expect this conversation from you. I expected very dry conversation. Yeah. That's why it was funny when you're talking about the difference when you were in Brazil, you noticed it that big, like the, the interaction was, was so different. Yeah, it is. It is. For example, when I was there, I was in my mood. There was no pressure. All these guys give me the feeling that I was one of them. And if you're training over here in Holland, there was always, oh, not, there was always an, 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 um, um, a pressure in between with my training partners, not having that much fun, you know, and it, it is necessary. When we're training also in Brazil, they train hard. They don't care about hitting each other, hurting each other. But afterwards, it was so fun. So after I came out of South America, not only Brazil, I went to Argentina, I went to, to a lot of, I went to Suriname, I went to a lot of countries in South America. I thought, wow, the mentality, the, 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 the vibes, you know, are so strong, so healthy, so relaxed. I thought, I need to bring that over to, to Holland too. So when I came back to my own gym and I was teaching, I was trying to get the mentality to cry, but they're not used to it, you know, so, God damn, it was so harsh again to get, to, to get back and they want, just want to train and uh, uh, just five minutes before the end of the training, they already look, oh, yeah, okay, five minutes, then the training is done and then I need to leave and I have to go to my work or I have to go to my family again and, and I had that behavior also. So when I was ready for teaching, I wanted to go out because I was constantly busy with myself for training, with kickboxing. When I teach for two, three, four hours a day, I was done with it with, because the passion. And there you come back to your uh, roots, South America. There, everything what they do is passion. They love, you know, and we are so wealth over here. Uh, we have a lot of wealth, you know, so we have so many things uh, to do in life. Well, in South America, America, the guys from the favelas, they say, I don't want to go to my house. I want to train. You know, I would just want to train, having fun with the guys, having good dinners. And even though I'm a southern of Holland, so the southern people are more cozy and more relaxed. And family, I have a lot of with family, you know, and also it's a big difference with the South Americans. Exactly. Indeed. It's, 
it's funny because when I speak to people about that, yeah, like they'll say like, yeah, I won't name them, but like some well-known fighters, and I say, is, is oh, so you've met so and so, and a, a European fighter, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, and I go, is he a good guy? And if I'm speaking to a guy, even not South American, a Latin person, an Italian or a or a Spanish person, they'll go, yeah, he's nice in that, but you know, like for a Swedish guy, you know, and not, but 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 not being not being like racist, but they're just saying yeah. like, you know, that that's. As happy as he's gonna be. If you, if you, if you, if my wife would be here, and uh, you should have asked her, what, what is Annie's dream? What does he want in life? Because I don't have, and I have a few goals, but no big goals. Because a lot of people have their, have a lot of things to achieve, and they want to have a, have a um, um, bucket list to do. I don't have that much. The only thing that I have. I want to buy a house in Spain. Okay, nice. America, of the south of Europe, you know, there's more relaxed, the food, the behaviors, the, 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 the time uh, consciousness, you know, the uh, everything, you know, the food, the weather, the, um, the relaxation over there, mentality. Everything, you know, I want to, so that's the only thing I think about because I like their mentality. I like their way of seeing and looking to the uh, way of life. And even though the Spanish are different than the Portuguese people and different than the Italians in America, in Europe, and different than the, Bra the Brazilians and the Argentina, uh, people from Argentina, you know, they are all one thing in common that is good weather. <laughs> that's yeah. important. That's good food. And mañana, mañana. If yeah. it's not today, then it will be tomorrow. Relax. No pressure. The coronavirus, the corona period, it was the best, best period in life for me. I felt that the, the, the tempo in life, in our life, in our city, in our country, in our Europe is so hard. I came to realize that I couldn't handle the tempo. I couldn't have, I cannot handle the speed. So. I made a choice for myself just to take as much relaxation moments as it po as is possible as it can. But yeah, it, it's, it's still difficult, you know, it's, um, still difficult. it's, it's funny. How much do you think, um, the weather and that affects as well? How much, because I, I just give you an example where, where I am, where I live and I always talk, I always message one of the, the guys that watches the podcast. Um, he lives in England. Um, and it was winter here and he goes to me, how, what's the temperature there for me, winter for Australia, where I am. And I live maybe 80 meters, a hundred meters from the water, from the ocean. And I take my daughter who's nine months old and I put her on a surfboard and she plays. And some days in winter is 25, 26 degrees for us Celsius. Um, yeah. and, and I'll tell you now, if you see me when it's 15 degrees here, 15 degrees Celsius, I have a, no bullshit, a Kathmandu jacket and a hoodie, right? And the kid always laughs because, mate, for him in England, 25 degrees is summer. I have cousins in Ireland and Sweden and they, 25 degrees, 28 degrees is too hot. They can't think of it. How much do you think the, yeah. the weather affects? Because I know in Alaska and places like Almost that, it's bad, really bad. Yeah. It's really bad. You know, the, um, last week, the bad weather. Really. I thought it was sunny, really hot, you know. The, the earth comes to be warm. So the, I think the, 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 the the water in the air is pretty r rough to handle, you know. And, of course, we are not used to it. Um, but the difference in the last week and now, you know, it's it's great. It gives you – it affects me a lot. And, like, last week, I told my wife, there was one day when the sun came and life, when I woke up, life was different. The day was different. The day after, it was bad, uh, rainy again, and it was cloudy, and it was uh, gray and, and dark. And I thought, God damn, I thought, oh, 
oh shit, man, that's the reason I want to go to a better country. Uh, even even the economic is maybe going worse. I don't care. It's all b- about having the the uh, yeah, your mental health, the power of life. Yeah. Um, just the just health, not the physical health. I, I want to go. I want to go to Holland. I've always wanted to go. But I have a question for you. In winter, when does the sun come out, and when does it set? In winter, in the middle of winter. Winter is like uh, if the sun goes out, <laughs> if it doesn't stay cloudy all day. Um, it's like uh, yeah, like eight between eight and nine o'clock, and it goes down like four five o'clock. Yeah, my wife won't go. She's not going to go. You never have to go to December. On the other side, a lot of people always telling, "Oh, it's also a nice game when everything is dark and uh, and, and, and cloudy again." So when you go inside, you put the candles on. It's gonna be a little bit romantic, you know. So they're making a, a kind of reason for themselves to handle, to skip the mental problem, the mental disorder you you will get from. And that's, I'm really open in that, you know, when the sun is shining, when you can open the doors and you hear the birds uh, whistling and, and, and doing the things, you know, having a, a bright uh, oversee of your, of your way. Do you, it doesn't matter where you live, you know, if you see people smiling, wearing a shirt, wearing shorts, you know, that's the life. If you have here, yeah, you're constantly under pressure. How does your car look? How did, so other things get important, you know? How do you look? How, what kind of house do you have? What kind of uh, car do you drive? And I, if I see to, for example, Spain, the people doesn't, don't care about their, 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 their house. You know, they don't care about the furniture, you know? It's, it's, it's all outside, you know? Wearing flip-flops. Not uh, Gucci uh, flip flops or Gucci uh, t-shirts or whatever, because for 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 us it's gray, it's dark. We are inside. When we go outside, we have to show off that we are we yeah, have enough happy. money or something. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. that you're happy. Ultimately, that's the the thing, because you know I was my, my cousins that live in Ireland. Um, they I remember, I man. I remember during the it, they were doing really well economically. And my cousin said, you yeah. should move here. And I was there in winter. And my cousins in Sweden said the same thing. You should try and move here. He said, blah, blah, blah. And I love Sweden. But the sun yeah. came out at 11 a.m. And then it set at like three or four. And they liked it. And me, if I stay maybe three months there, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. But Holland is but not that bad. Say- Holland's not that bad with the, with the sun. Or England, Ireland, they are really, but also the, the colors in, uh, they don't use that many colors. Maybe nowadays, but when I went to England a few times and to Ireland, you know, it's gray. The houses are gray. They have the same colors. It's not that f- colorful, you know, and Holland is more colorful. Why well, they have more, the houses are, I'm sure. I, I want to go to it's- Holland. Yeah, yeah. It's very pretty. It's very, it's, it's very quaint. It's very neat. Yeah. But it's really, they, they, they use uh, different kind of forms. As you can see on the back, the houses are not straight close to each other. It's, uh, of course you have places, areas, areas, areas and uh, neighborhoods or not that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's pretty colorful, you know, it's, uh, it's not that bad, you know, but. Uh, compared to England, for example, uh, uh, for example, Tokyo, Tokyo, everything. The people are always in black. black you know, they wear shoes in black. All the same color. It's not that not that nice. Even though I love Tokyo, by the way, I love Japan. This is the same, but that's because I love their behavior. You know, they are always respectful, even though they maybe not respect you. They act like <laughs> you know. Yeah. In my case, in my case, it's better too because they respect me. You know, so that that's always good. They do everything for me, so that's good too. But I love Japan, and I know there are a lot of beautiful places in Japan, in Japan too. So, uh, can you can you talk uh, about can you talk about your your history in fighting and your experience in fighting Japan, K one, Europe, and now one championship? Can you 
talk about that, compare them, tell me what you think? I, 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 yeah, it's, it's the same reason I just told you. The Japanese are so respectful. They are so, um, low in their energy level, in their uh, vibe, you know, in their, you know, so they always acting. I think to will, uh, to work for you, you know, so they have no problem. So, they give you the feeling that you're an athlete. Now, one championship has the same. They have the same. Only they are bigger than K1. They are more out of spoken than K1 because they are not only Japanese. There are a lot of Asian people people in their uh, in in their business, you know. And they are always respectful. Asian people are always nice, you know. They are always having a smile. Type people, the, the land of the smile. The country of the smiles and it's they have the same only they are next level you know they are so they taking care of you they're always laughing they're open door for you they give you the feeling that you are the athlete like k1 did too and besides the k1 i, I performed in a lot of other uh, organizations yeah it's just simple that the organization just working hard just to to have a good business, you know, it's only money wise. They, 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 they invite you, they pay you, they give you, they are trying to give you the feeling that you are uh, important. Yeah. But yeah, to be really easy, the business plan is just having an event, inviting fighters, paying the fighters, paying their hotel fight and you go, you know, I don't know. In Asia it's different. K1, one championship, they, you know, they make contact with you. How do you perform? If you have some problems, they take care of it. Um, if you want to speak to people, they're trying their best to do as uh, to ask you as quick as possible. Um, yeah, yeah, Asia. What Asia. you know, K one, K one and Pride. You know that was to me like the the height of not not just in Asia and Japan, but I think at the time. It was the biggest, you know, or the best. I, I don't know at the time. Now, do you see a resurgence in Asia, in Asian martial arts with one championships? Do you see one being able to carry that flag? Never, never. Even though uh, one championship, uh, you see, doesn't uh, you cannot compare them. Maybe business wise, you know, their model their model is also different, but also uh, maybe only the 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 the, the, the highest tech, you know, the, the 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 money that they have. They have they are two biggest organizations in the world, in the in the martial arts in the fight business. Uh, but there is a lot of difference. I I cannot handle. I couldn't handle. I think if I ever should have should have had the chance to fight for America, if I had the chance. I had a chance, by the way, uh, when I started doing MMA. I, uh, there were open conversations with Bellator and with Ryzen. And uh, yeah, it was pretty simple for me to choose. Ryzen was the best. On the other side, maybe afterwards it was the wrong one because Ryzen, they put me in front of lines. Uh, after my first fight, they, they throw me in the, in the, in the, in the deep. Uh, two, two experienced guys. I fought with Darren Cruikshank, who was a yeah. former UFC fight, my second fight. I didn't even had, uh, even, I didn't train for more than a year I think in like 10 or 11 months I was training and I needed to fight against Darren Cruikshank afterwards against a Japanese former Olympic wrestler a, a silver medalist winner of the Olympic Games you know and uh, all, they all had 20 plus MMA fights professional fights so they they put me into the deep and uh, that's try that, that that was a thing I felt some love again talking about passion when I started doing MMA I really liked it. Maybe that was also because of I, I hated kickboxing so much and I want to get rid of kickboxing. I started doing MMA because it was so new, new inspiration. Also a different kind of mentality in that, in, in that game, you know, especially in Holland, you know, kickboxers are rough and tough, you know, and uh, the MMA guys, the Jiu Jitsu guys are more relaxed, you know, and uh, that gave me a really good feeling. Only my self-confidence after the second fight against Darren Cruikshank was, you know, 
you know so well that's a uh, huge a huge gap like Crookshank's so experienced and an Olympic silver medalist fucking no um, prizes he's gonna try and take you down he's not gonna say oh can I <laughs> can I try and kickbox with Andy Sarah he's gonna he's going to yeah, the ground afterwards i thought maybe it was better if you can see now the stand-up fighters a lot of kickboxing dutch kickboxers are also uh, getting into a balloter we have a better step up fights you know uh, to perform and to get into the mma circuit so they give you a little bit more space uh uh to to perform yeah to get get uh, get the mma uh, game into uh, into themselves. Yeah, you know when when you fought, I think was a you fought you fought Pacquiao, and I think it was you'd already fought the night you already fought once in that night or twice in that night. I think it was for the finals. There's been so many fights, I kind of get them all mixed up. But you were at the back. I remember this clearly. You were at the back, and your nose. You had stuff in your nose, like you had. Did you break your nose before you fought Pacquiao? To be honest, we never. It's, it's it's really it's it's like it's not the, the straight anymore. I think I broke it once or maybe twice. I don't know, but I never let uh, let the, let let it heal. I I never. I I was there was one moment that I felt I think it's broken because I got I got a headache for more than two weeks, so probably it, it it's been broken. But against the second time against Borkow, I was I was really tired. Um, Sometimes you are tired physically. Right? But, but was that the Mentally, fight that you had the, the things up your nose? You had like two yeah, so. tissues yeah. up your nose and it looked like your nose was broken. And I was watching it and you had to fight Bokka. And I thought, whoa, fight Bokka is hard. Yeah. But I could tell that your nose yeah. was fucked. Is, yeah, yeah. is that, am I correct yeah. with that? I don't, I, we never checked it up if my, my, bro, my nose was broken, but it was. It was 2006. I, 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 I don't know the, the content that you saw the video that you saw that I had some, uh, things in my nose. Uh, but the second one, I was so broke that I first fought Calacoda in the first fight. That's the one. That's the one. I made so many low kicks on my ankles, my foot, my shins were so hurt. And I got a knockdown, by the way. So my eye was swollen as hell. And, um, I was already tired of that. But then, then my fight against Masato was there because uh, Masato, he was the man. He, uh, everybody wanted to fight him and he knew that. And he, they were talking, they were asking him, uh, asking him a lot about, hey, what do you expect when Andy should fight you? And he always need to, to answer the press from, you know what? I know everybody wants to fight me. Let them step in the lane like the other ones, et cetera, et cetera. So there was always the the things that he uh, didn't like it, I think. And I was already rooting for him. I was already uh, 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 challenging him when I was fought in shoe boxing in 2002. So my goal is to fight Masato, like all the fighters in Japan, uh, outside uh, Japan, always wanted to fight uh, Masato too. I was uh, already challenging him in magazines, in interviews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, finally, there was the moment I could fight Masato. And Masato was always giving the answer, okay, Andy, he's a shoe boxer. He's not from my level. And he's weak. He's defense. He's slow. You know, and just to get rid of the answers that I, he always got from, uh, you know, he got always the same, same questions. What do you expect from this opponent when you fight him or what? You know, so yeah, he brought me down a bit, you know, and that was the moment for me to, 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 yeah, to show up that I was on a different level that he expected, that he told. And then I won from them. That was, so I give everything. There was also the fight that I, I never had that feeling uh, ever anymore. Before I didn't have that feeling at also afterwards. It was so strong of Adeline and, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, Euphoria. How do you call it? Euphoria. We call it in Dutch. Euphoria. Like, Euphoria. Euphoria. Thank you. And uh, it was so strong. I didn't thought about the next five days again. It was so happy in, in the inside. Still, I got a bullet, bulletproof uh, 
show off, even though I was really happy. And but I was tired. I gave him six rounds. I gave so many, and then I needed to perform against uh, Boaca, and also against Masada. I was so giving so many kicks. I was so I was tired. So what happened um, when I had uh, the entrance? When I walked in, I wanted to dance. In the time I was young, and I loved to do jump and to dance. Uh, you know, when 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 the song came. And I was trying to start dancing and I think, oh, fuck. So there is a moment, as you can see on the video, <laughs> that I stopped dancing with the feeling, bulletproof Andy, to not show off that you were hurt, that I was hurt. But my eye was swollen. I was tired. My stamina, I, I felt my body was broken. And uh, to be honest, I thought in the first round, I thought I was way behind Borkow. But I was putting some pressure. Uh, there was nothing happened. The, yeah, there was there was not a lot of things that that we did both, you know. But we worked, we worked, and in my opinion, I was far behind him. And then in the second round, I felt a hard thing. I thought he elbowed me, but I was so weak mentally. I, I, I know the run is high, so you know when people run, they get high of it, you know. Yeah, we also also have that, right in the fighting game. You know, if you don't think, if you cannot. Uh, if you don't don't get tired, you know, then you are, in my opinion, you are a fighter high. Your fight is high, you know. And I always have that. In some certain points, sometimes it started in the first round, sometimes in the third. Sometimes it always happened, you know. But in that time, it happened. I was too conscious of a lot of things. The, the tiredness. Uh, I didn't show off the bulletproof Andy, of course. You couldn't saw it. But the moment that I felt something hard, I wanted to complain. Like I did uh, many times. I wanted to complain. On that moment, he hit me and I went down like a chopped tree, you know. And, and from then I wanted to complain again. But that was the moment I felt, oh shit, man, I'm not in the zone anymore. I'm not in the fighter zone. I'm not high enough. I got in trouble and, and he hit it me like, like a child. And I was knocking down. Afterwards, I was so hurt. I was so tired. I was uh, peeing, I peeing blood, you know. I was. Yeah, I was dead on that moment. So, yeah. Yeah. Two things I want to say, because, you know, you see commentators, you know, and they have a job to do. I'm not criticizing. I'm just for, for people, you know, when they say, you know, this fighter lost what he could have done. He did this. He did that. And, you know, like there's been there's been times because I've worked with some fighters as well. And sometimes, you know, people say, what could he have done better? What blah, blah, blah. And I think, man. You have no fucking idea what happened, you know, and sometimes you lose, you know, one of the, and, yeah. and it, so there's that. But then the other thing I wanted to say to you was if you could speak about this, you know, exactly what you're saying. Like you're in the zone and nothing can go wrong. Like, you know, you know, you're in the zone. It's like a video game, but then there's a moment when you realize you're not in the zone and you, and you, you can hear someone in the crowd talking you can hear thing you're you're fighting or you're playing football or whatever and you're thinking did i leave the stove on my wife is going to get angry what whatever how do you deal with yeah, that whatever. how do you deal with that yeah. on on that moment against buka i didn't have it that strong but i felt it i felt that i'm not in his zone and the moment that i'm thinking then it's not good because i'm thinking about the way i'm thinking you know so i'm not in his zone that was the first time that I had it. I had it in trainings, but yeah, you know, that, that, that is not that bad, you know, in training, you can say, hey, stop, it's enough or whatever, you know. Um, I never admitted, uh, by the way, in, in the trainings, but I felt it sometimes. So it was not that new. And afterwards, I never had it. I, I had other feelings. I had other moments that I felt from, oh, this is not, I cannot get in the zone, but. I'm doing this just, I'm right now I'm in the ring and I'm just fighting and it's like sparring, you know, I'm just sparring. I don't get into the zone, but I get rid of it, that idea. And I just kept on fighting and then I lost my fight, for example. Um, but the last one, I never had that feeling. It was against uh, Typhon Oskan. Yep. It was uh, after my MMA career. I have uh, of two years. I, uh, I went back to kickboxing. And I didn't want to, but they 
paid me good and people in the, our province, because he's from our, our province, told me, I need to fight him, he's new. And I thought, you know what, the money is good and uh, the MMA doesn't go well right now. Shall I take the challenge? Uh, let's do it. Let's start earlier than you, uh, normal because you didn't have a real kickboxing preparation in two years. But it, it went like this. Sometimes in, in the camp, you go like this, right? I'm going to, you start from here and you go up. And it was already high. It was started really hard because I wanted to perform, but it stayed like this. On the moment we came close to the fight, we should have peaked, but we did it. I, I, I stopped it. I said, it would be enough. Because I didn't want to get hurt anymore. I thought I was too old and I, it's enough. I can handle it on the moment in the ring. On the moment itself, I'm going to uh, be competitive enough to, to, to handle it. And that was the moment that uh, when I uh, woke up that day of the fight, I realized, oh, it's going to be a different one today. But... You know what? Maybe it's different because you came back from M from the MMA period. Maybe it's just the day. Maybe it's like any other fight. It's a different one. Nothing special. So I went to the to the to the arena. No pressure. I stepped into the arena. No pressure. I said goodbye to the fans. You know, in the arena. No pressure. I came into the dressing room. No pressure. And then I started. A, being a real uh, a little scary because I think god damn I need to be a little bit sensitive a little bit density you know and I wanted to feel it but I, I couldn't I couldn't bring it bring it up so in the warming up nothing when I came to the, when I went to the ring behind the stage no no pressure when the entrance song came no pressure when I stepped in the ring with my foot no pressure the first punch no pressure and I was realizing that, that I was, I was just there. I was just there. Then I hear friends of mine cheering for me. Andy, hey, come on. We paid a lot of money for you. Of course, <laughs> not that good friends, but I hear famous people I know, you know, and then I suddenly was in the fourth round and then I wanted to start uh, working, you know, and then I was too late and then I got knocked out. So then I said, you know what, Andy, this is the moment. We call it the cookies off. It's, it's done. If you, if you, if you have this, then it's done. Then it, that, that's the feeling that you need to stop. So I stopped for three months and, uh, I put my money that I had in some other business, business. I've actually that went wrong too. And that was the reason that, uh, three months after that fight, one champion uh, called me. And if I wanted to fight again for them, blah, blah, blah. And I, like I said, I lost some money in another business and I said, God damn. Okay. Financial is, it is interesting. Two, I go to Asia again. I can see the Asian world again, but in another perspective, you know, like I told you, therefore was always working, working in the tight lane, you know, that you told me, you know, and now I can be really conscious about where I am, what I'm going to do, enjoying the environment, who you are, etc., etc. in a totally different aspect. And uh, I said, you know what, Chantal, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to work for it. But then still, my first fight, I had, a, I didn't have a good preparation because I, the business was still running, you know, but I, it was so pressureful. It was an entertainment uh, party event hall, like uh, almost thousand square meters, you know. So I needed to be there a lot with my family. Oh. We were working hard. So my first fight against Anthony, jo jo I don't know, jo Anthony. Uh, yes, I oh, forgot his name. Janakao. Uh, yeah, oh, Jukani. Jukani. Is it Jukani? I'll tell you now. I, I know exactly yeah. who it is because I've seen the fight. But, um, yeah. Now I have to pronounce his name right. I've got it here. It's I'm sure it's Jukani. Done. Okay, Anthony Jukani. He's of American Nigerian uh, roots. Yeah, it's Jukani. Uh, Anthony uh, Anthony uh, Jukani. Uh, yeah, I fought him. You know, I was running. Uh, I was chasing him, and but I wasn't the fit enough. And then the second fight again, Jotsi Klai, I was in a mentally disorder. I said, uh, against again a loss, MMA losses, against the typhoon losses, uh, against Anthony I lost. Cannot ha can I handle the 
big yachting client again. So there were so many doubts. There were so many unconfident, unconfidence. So after the fight, I said, I'm going to change up my team. I'm going to change, change, trying to change up my mental game because I still want to perform once more as good as I can. So I changed it all up. I went back to my former box trainer. Uh, he's the head trainer right now. And uh, especially my brain, especially my mental healthiness. I had to, uh, had to do... Yeah, I had to fill up again, you know, to, to, to energize myself up again. So I'm right there right now. I feel strong and great as, as, as ever. Really. So who, who are you fighting, Andy? Not, not sure yet. Okay. Not decided yet. Okay. Um, how did the connection occur with Jose Aldo? That's good. Yeah, man. But how did it happen? Like, good. How, how did that happen? Oh, Pedro Rizzo. You know Pedro Rizzo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a good friend of Peter Arts. Right. And Peter and I train at the box club. My, my, my box training is not a keep training. He's my, is the box trainer. And Peter also trained it over there. Also Pedro. And Pe Pedro asked, uh, Peter if he knew some good, uh, lightweights to help Jose Alde out with his uh, preparations. And then he said, yeah, we, uh, we've got two guys, Albert Krause and Andy Sauer. And, uh, Peter said, you know what? Andy's with a lot of Loki's, although is more similar to Andy. And so that, that, uh, that's how it, uh, how it came that we get in, uh, in contact with each other and we became friends. He also gave me his first, uh, title. No, belt. no way. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. It's more. Amazing. It's more than amazing. It's unbelievable. When I got it, I, I think, are you joking? Are you crazy, man? It's your first UFC title belt you won uh, after a week, you know, when, uh, yeah. when UFC took out. You know, I think, wow, are you crazy, man? So that's why he's, uh, that's he's amazing. in the gym right now. Yeah, that is, that is yeah. insane. I'm a huge fan of Jose Aldo, huge fan. He's a, he, was an ama he is an amazing fighter. Yeah, yeah. Talking about not having pressure, that guy is just doing his own thing, you know. He's he's still a child too, you know. He's still playing every day hours for PlayStation, you know. He's he's a funny guy. He's he's awesome. He's awesome. How good was his kickboxing when you were when you were training with him? Really good. It was really good. Really good. A, a a bit a bit lazy in some way, you know. But that's the difference between us, you know. We're working hard, you know, and Brazilian. It was always lazy and he couldn't handle the, the cold. That's why, uh, after he went over to Holland just one time, he asked me to come over to Brazil and every time I said, I cannot handle. We were running in the snow, you know, in the forest, you know, to the hills up and down. He was like a lazy bastard, you know, I thought he was just lazy because I was young too. I couldn't see the perspective of it, you know, that he came from an. Uh, a, a country where it's where almost the whole year is uh, where, where it's hot. Oh, you know, where he's from, it's weather. hot all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So he went with he went up with me to the hill, and I was running, and I, I left him behind. God damn, where is his speed? Where is his performance uh, trigger point? You know, said, come on, man, I was winning easily. So after the running on the end of the the road, there's a long long lane, and we always did a sprint on the end. You know. So we stopped with the four of us, you know, and uh, we said, uh, okay, let's sprint, okay? Don't yet, we always do sprinting. And he was just, we, he couldn't speak English that well. I said, okay, 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 okay. He said, we're starting. So I counted one, two, three. And I was sprinting and I'm not that fast, to be honest. I was running, I was running ahead. So I see, I see another guy, a friend of us who was training with us. He said, I'm running. Yeah. I mean, cut them, cut them, cut them, cut them. You know, and I was running, and on the end, suddenly Jose came. On the end, he was just running easily, and I was laughing, was laughing, just because he couldn't handle the cold. He said, my muscles are so tight right now, I cannot go, you know, my body's, it can, it, my body cannot handle it, you know? But on the moment that we, uh, from, well, let's say, 100 meters, we needed to do, do a sprint, it was just the guy, there was a little boy, also with us, for, with the four of us. There was a little boy, and he said, Jose was just relaxing, running after you guys, and on the end, 
he just moved his arms a little bit more and he was just <laughs> chasing me so fast. So, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful story. So, yeah, yeah. He's an incredible athlete. Eh? He's very, very, as an athlete, very, very, very good. His only bad behavior is uh, drinking Coke. Drinking Coke. Oh, yeah. He did in my preparation also. I said, just one, one, just one, just one Coke a day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a better soccer player? Who's a better football player? You or him? Yeah, I can play soccer too, you know, but he's, yeah, no, he's elegant, you know, the South Americans are fast. He's also fast, you know. So and if you can handle a ball, if you have a good, uh, good uh, balance, if you get, uh, have a good feeling with the ball on your feet, you know, that, and then when you are fast, you're there. But he loves. He uh, he has a uh, good. He has big influences in uh, Flamengo. You know, he got some. They have two sky boxes. Uh, every every game, he's uh, he's sitting in the sky boxes to see the uh, the games. You know, he's he's an yeah. He's I think he's like me. He's more a fan of the the, the game soccer than uh, than the fight fight. Do you think it was hard for him fighting, like the pressure, or do you think he has passion for fighting? Compared to you, or I don't know. I think we have in the, we have we are the same. Only I'm white. He's a little bit blacker, and he's from Brazil and from Holland. And I have another mental uh, problem over here. And he doesn't have that many problems. I think so. He feels good. But that's why. That's why I told you. You know, it, uh, the expectations over here are way different than in Brazil. If you come from from the favelas, you know, they can be can be happy that you can earn some money with some fighting. I think he's the it. It is. It, I'm 100% sure, 100% sure that he doesn't have the passion for football as he has, or for uh, so, uh, for martial arts as he has for uh, soccer. That's 100% right. sure. That's so interesting, man. That's yeah. Um. All right. Just I'm going to ask you a couple of. Sorry. What's that? Just go how for him it was the the first thing to do. Martial arts, the fastest thing to earn some money. For me, it was because my father leads me into it, you know, and I just wanted to perform for him because he made me a little bit of a like a small kid. He made me thinking small and he was the one I looked up to. And so I want to do what he expected from me, you know, and for him, for, for him was like, yeah, the only thing I can achieve something is get to get out of this favela, this bad situation. I just go fighting like all my friends does, you know? So I think it's the, we have the same, the same, almost the same path, only in a different country, yeah, yeah. different world and different, uh, sides, side things. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a couple of questions here. Um, Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Who do you think? I'm a fan of both of them, but I, I like Roy Jones more. You think you'll win? I think he's more elegant. He's more a better boxer. He's more, yeah, he's, uh, to win. Yeah, it's too difficult to say, you know, you cannot say. I think uh, I could, I could give a 45, 55. Uh, in Roy. favor of Roy Jones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I, yeah, I, I like the both guys, you know, the, the way Mike Tyson lived in the past from what he is right now. Yeah, you only can give them credits of it. Uh, for Roy, yes, yeah, the same. You know, I, I love him as an as as an athlete. He's yeah, he was far behind his level. You know, he's he, he was he's such an elegant fighter, it's such, such a beautiful fighter. It's explosive, crazy. You know, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So uh, he, Roy Jones Jr. at his peak was like some. It was amazing. You just could not be hit, and he would crack you. <laughs> It looked so easy. He was a performer, you know. Even Mike, Mike is saying he was a performer when he came angry in the ring with his with his eyebrows downwards and looking to his to his opponent like, "Ah, oh, I'm gonna eat you," you know. And when he swing, you know, when he bobbed and weaved, and when he knocked out somebody, it's, oh, you know, you cannot. It's, it's difficult to make a choice in in in. in between these two guys, they are the, the best, one of the best ever. So Roy Jones Jr. made it look like fuck. Sometimes people are fighting two guys or three guys. You know what I mean? He hit you from all different angles, and yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, he, he let you look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gonna hit me. 
Yeah, beautiful. Ah, I love it. Um, I have, what about Adesanya versus Costa? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's too difficult. Because, uh, Costa, there are always uh, fighters who just came up in a really short notice. They come up and you think, wow, this is going to be the next next one. Because therefore they don't have uh, didn't have had a lot of fights against good fighters, so you cannot you cannot give them a mark or you cannot say okay what does how they handle how they uh, get their back straight against a really good opponent. And I think Adesanya is more more experienced in that way, so I think on the on the end if Costa wouldn't knock him out. In the first, in the beginning of the fight, then I think Adesanya would win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I, pro- I agree with you with that one for sure. Um, and Khabib versus Justin. Khabib versus Gaethje. This is your weight division, isn't it? It'll be the same, the same, the same kind of fight is against each other. You know, even though if you, I always look like. A PlayStation show, a story, a game, you know, a PlayStation game, five this, where they get their strong points in it and the weak points. And they are almost a little bit the same. AJ is more a fighter, you know, but if he's going to fight, you know, um, uh, Khabib is going to throw him down. And maybe uh, Gage is going to stand up maybe and try to fight. And it's still on the end. I think Khabib, uh, yeah, I think Khabib gonna win. Yeah, he's gonna win. All right. The last thing, man, and I appreciate your time so much, man. Last thing I'm gonna ask you is, what's your toughest fight? The toughest fight you've had in the ring, the the fight that when you and if you could talk us through it. And mentally, it was just uh, Petrosha, Petrosha. You know, Petrosha oh, was yeah. the second fight. I already had a bad fight against Buka. I didn't deserve to win. After the, the ex, extra round, I deserved to win, in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was mad. I couldn't handle I, I was I, I was in a breakdown, like I told you. I had so many things in private to handle. Then my both trainers uh, were in a fight. They were not good with each other anymore. I didn't knew that on the time, you know, because they wanted, didn't want to tell me. But I felt it because their energy wasn't like it was before you know so i felt it i i couldn't get out of my own trouble mentally disorder that i had and then i needed to fight book i only was fighting out of a fight system uh we train i train i'm teaching also out of uh, out of, uh with game plans you know we have kind of three principal systems is like uh first if you can build up your tech you're gonna do that if that not if that it's not gonna work be able to always be able to, uh, to to counter, you know, to be ready, you know. So if you allow uh, your opponent to attack you, be sure that you're gonna end, you know, to show the judge the judges that you can counter and that you end up the the motion, the movements uh, at that moment. And the most beautiful part is to just try to interrupt your opponent. That only can happen when you're maximum 100% concentrated. So you can feel the right moment, timing, right? That's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to mix it up always. And it, all these three things couldn't handle. And I always say, and my, my trainers also, and what I'm teaching, you know, if the, nothing happens, uh, 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 if all these three things are not working or in some way it doesn't allow you to do, then you speak to your heart, your fighters so just go hard. And all these four things I tried and I, it, it didn't work. So I was in a mentally problem. I said, God damn, that was the first moment in life that I could say I did everything about it, but he was faster. He was better the day. He was, yeah, you know, I tried everything, but he was so fast. He was so good and he was, he was really strong. He knocked uh, the, the, his Japanese opponent in the first round. He knocked him out. He was fresh. He was hungry, unbelievable hungry. And I felt it, you know. So it was uh, uh, the toughest fight. But mostly, not physically, but more mentally. And physically? 
a rough like against Buka. I was so tired. I was so uh, injured in many ways. The body, my foot, my sh the, the, the feet, the shins, uh, my ribs, my 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 my, uh, my, hand, uh, my face, my right hand. So I was just, <laughs> I was a broken guy. What happens in K1, right? You fight once, right? Because you can, what a lot of people don't understand is you can fight someone, right? And you fight for five minutes, right? But the adrenaline covers it all. You don't feel the pain. You don't, you don't even know you got knocked out. You're whatever. But when the adrenaline goes away and you have time to sit, everything hurts. But then they come in and they say to you, Hey, uh, you got to fight again and it's Bokal. What happens in your Stress. head? Yeah. What happens? How do you, how do you deal with it all? Can you talk us through that? Like what happens in K1 Stress. at the back? Stress and fear. What to handle? Keep yourself warm, hot, you know, not to cool down too much for the injuries. Uh, talking, relaxing. It's up how, how I felt. I love to relax, not to talk too much. But when the, the, the next fight came, we talked a little bit and allowing the stress until a certain point. You know, if you are allowing it too much, it takes it over. You know, when the stress takes you over, then it's done. You know, so I was always holding that up. I was always thinking about the next prestige, the next victory, the next winning. What could deliver you the next victory? Could it delivers you some extra money, some extra power, uh, some extra confidence, and one little step close to the championship, to the belt. And if you have the belt, you get more money, you get more attention, you get more self-esteem. You get, you know, I said, Colin, I need to do this. Uh, what I always was thinking, okay, it's now it's 12 o'clock, in an half hour, I need to fight. In one hour, I'm done. I'm ready. You know, I don't have to perform anymore. Then it's finished. Just give yourself one hour. In one hour, you just need to have one more fight. Time is just time. That I was always thinking about. How much time do you have between one fight and the other in, in K1? One, it was like not, not, not more than one and a half hour. So within an hour, you was already preparing again and ready for it, you know, and uh, something, something happened or whatever, you know, uh, but it was always, not, it was not, not longer than one and a half, two hours. Yeah. So the adrenaline's gone, everything you saw, you, you would. 100%. It's done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> you stand up and it's always laying down when I stand up and oh so my I just like uh you were you were hitting a truck, you know, oh the muscle are sore again, tight, strong, you feel your uh uh your fingertips and your toes, you know, your uh, they were cold already because all the injuries and, and, and uh the the recovering part of the human of the human body works like all the energy, all the warmth and the heat goes to the pro to the spots where the problems are or the injuries are. So I was always cold in my hands, you know, I need to warm up again, you know. So that was a crazy thing. You know, I think I need I only were thinking I need to warm up again. Warm, get get as hot as possible. Because I was warming up, getting fast. Mentally I thought, okay, okay, you still have two minutes, twenty minutes to go. Relax, relax. Oh, ten minutes to go. Okay, Andre or my coach, go ahead, we need to warm up. So we did a little warm up. When I felt I have enough I I've done enough. I was not always a guy who warmed up for hours or minutes or, or really hot. I was always saving my energy, you know, because in my mind I think, okay, Lose a lot, get rid of a few, a few, um, a little energy, but you also need a lot of energy for the fight. So, yeah, that's how we went. Now, awesome. Hey, um, Andy, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Was not what I expected. I have to be honest with you. It was 20 times better, man. A hundred times better. Like, I, um, thank you so much for sharing everything that you have with us. And, um, I really appreciate it, man, and thank you so much. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, people. Good luck, folks. Have a nice weekend. Thank Say you, mate. Your family. All the best. Take awesome. care.